Hello everyone and welcome to the first video of section 6 of this course. After we have seen how to interpret and design a single line diagram for any project in the previous section, I will now explain sizing and calculations of the major electrical equipments and conductors that are necessary for completing the design of any project. I will begin with the sizing of the major equipment used for any project, which is the transformer. So what is a transformer? It is an electrical device that consists of coils of wire that are used to transfer electrical energy by changing the magnetic field. Transformers are capable of either increasing or decreasing the voltage and current levels of their supply without modifying its frequency or the amount of electrical power being transferred from one winding to another via the magnetic circuit. A single phase voltage transformer basically consists of two electrical coils of wire, one called the primary winding and another called the secondary winding. So we can see here a single phase transformer which consists of coils on both sides, the primary over here and the secondary side. And these coils are wrapped around an iron core. Transformers can either be step up or step down. If a transformer increases the voltage on its secondary side, it is called a step up transformer. If it decreases the voltage on its secondary side, then they are called step down transformers. So the basic concept behind a transformer is that it contains coils of wire on both ends of a transformer. These ends are called the primary windings and the secondary windings. The more number of turns on the primary winding than the secondary winding means that this transformer is used to step down the voltage. Like for example from 11 kilovolts to 415 volts for a three-phase transformer. In contrast, if more turns of wire on the secondary side than the primary side, this means that this is a step up transformer that can transform, for example, 6 kilovolts into 110 kilovolts more or less. That was just the basic understanding of any transformer that you should at least have an idea about. Electrical power in a transformer. The power rating of a transformer is obtained by multiplying the current by the voltage to obtain a rating in volt amperes VA. The power available in the secondary winding will be the same as the power in the primary winding. They are constant wattage devices and they don't change the power, only the voltage to current ratio. This means that the power will remain constant, but the voltage will change from the primary to secondary transformation. Transformers are rated in volt amperes, kilovolt amperes or mega volt amperes, noting that 1 megavolt amperes equals 1000 kilovolt amperes and they are not rated in kilowatts. The main reason for that is the unknown power factor. In fact, the power factor plays an important role for indicating the loads in kilowatts and not in kilovolt amperes. This is why transformers manufacturers always indicate the power rating in kilovolt amperes instead of kilowatts because the power factor is not taken into account. This is also proven when converting kilovolt amperes to kilowatts by multiplying the kilovolt ampere rating by the power factor. And the output power factor of the transformer, it always depends on the connected load. Now let's look at types of transformer according to their basis of cooling methods. Actually, electrical transformers can be classified into different categories depending on their design, construction, supply, and purpose. However, I will emphasize on the types of transformers according to their cooling type that should be mentioned in your device. Actually, the transformer is an equipment that heats due to the connected loads and due to the produced magnetic fields inside. So it is always important to consider the cooling type in your design. The first type is the dry transformer and the second is the oil transformer or it could also be called oil immersed 
type. From their names, we can tell that a dry type does not contain any liquid for cooling down the transformer, and an oil type utilizes oil for cooling down the transformer. Let's look into each type's specifications. A dry type transformer is a type of which never uses any insulating liquid where its winding or core are immersed in liquid. Rather, the windings and core are kept within a sealed tank that is pressurized with air. It has less fire-related risks, and also it is safe to be installed inside buildings. Dry transformers have two types of cooling. Air Forced AF, which is equipped with fans to cool down the transformer, and Air Natural AN, which does not utilize any equipped fans to cool down, but natural air. Second type of a transformer is the Oil Immersed type. It is a kind of voltage transformation device utilizing the oil cooling method to reduce the transformer temperature. Different from the dry type, the body of oil immersed transformer is installed in the welded steel oil tank filled with insulation oil. An oil immersed transformer is suitable for outdoor locations. It has higher fire related risks and this is why it should be installed outdoors. They also offer better cooling than a dry transformer and they can handle higher ratings than a dry transformer. Types of oil immersed transformer are five types. To differentiate between these types and understand them, we can look at the first letter and the third letter. What is after these letters are the description of the way of cooling down the internal oil and the external air. For example, the first type is ONAN, which is an abbreviation for oil natural, air natural. So for this type, the internal oil is cooled naturally same as the external air. The second type is the oil natural air forced, which is the ONAF. Oil here is cooled naturally and the external air is forced with equipped fans, similar to these fans of this transformer. The third type is the oil forced air forced, which means the oil and air are cooled using fans and pumps for circulating the cooled oil. Then there is the oil natural water forced. This type uses water to cool down the air. And finally, the oil forced water forced, which utilizes water to cool down the oil and the air. Now let's look into different connections for a three phase transformer. Three phase transformer core has three sets of windings. Those sets of primary and secondary windings will be connected in either delta or Y configurations to form a complete unit. The various combinations of ways that these windings can be connected together are as follows. The first connection that can be connected inside a transformer is delta delta, second is Y Y, third is Y delta, and fourth is the delta Y. Their ways of connections are shown in this diagram. This is how a delta delta is connected. This is the primary side and this is the secondary side. The Y Y is connected in a Y shape for the primary and also a Y shape in the secondary. And we have here the Y to delta connection. And finally, the delta to Y connection. Among all these connections, I will explain the important connection that you as a designer need to understand the most, which is the latter type, the delta Y connection. The delta Y transformer is connected this way internally. The primary side is connected in a delta shape, whereas the secondary side is connected in a Y shape, which is exactly what we need for a distribution system. Let me explain this clearly. Let's assume that this is an 11 kV to 415V transformer. So the primary side will be 11 kV and the secondary side is 415V. So the primary side is connected to the medium voltage cable, which has a three phase course, R, Y, and B. The secondary side of this transformer is 415 volts, 
which will be connected to our devices and appliances. We notice for the secondary side of this transformer, there are four terminals instead of three. These terminals are used for the phases R, Y, and B, and the fourth terminal is for the neutral line, which is connected to the common point of the R, Y, and B phases. In other words, this transformer is actually converting a three-wire system to a four-wire system that can be utilized in our homes for different devices. Let me explain why we need this fourth wire, which is the neutral, for our devices. If we measure the line-to-line -line voltage, for example, from R to Y phase over here, we will get a 415 volts. The same also will apply if we connect the R phase to the B phase and vice versa. However, if we measure the voltage between any phase to the neutral over here, we will get a voltage of 240 volts, which is compatible for our single phase devices and appliances. Of course, this amount can differ from country to country. Some places utilize 220 volts or 230 volts. It doesn't matter, the same concept will apply. To obtain the line to neutral voltage, we are actually dividing the line to line voltage over root three. So to obtain the line to neutral voltage, we are dividing the line to line voltage by root three. In this case, the line to line voltage is 415. So 415 divided by root three will give us 240 volts, which is exactly what we need for our single phase devices and appliances. Also, this neutral line plays a vital role in returning back currents caused by unbalanced and non-linear loads. In fact, a neutral line in a transformer is solidly earth, which means that it is connected to earth this way. I will be explaining the reason for this in details in the earthing and lightning system section. So right now, we have understood the criteria of a delta to Y transformer and the importance of having a four wire system to be utilized by our devices in our homes. Now let's look into the important part, which is how to size a transformer using these simple steps. Step one is to obtain the main demand load for the entire project. And this main demand load shall be obtained after completing all the DB, SMDB schedules and also taking into consideration all connected loads. Step two is to convert the main demand load in kilowatts to amperes using the formula loads in amperes equal loads in kilowatt multiplied by 1000 divided by root three multiplied by the power factor, multiplied by the line-to-line -line voltage. The third step is to apply the transformer sizing formula for a three-phase transformer to obtain the power rating in kilovolt ampere, which equals the load voltage or the line-to-line -line load voltage multiplied by the obtained load amps multiplied by root three divided by 1000. And the final step is to select the suitable size of a transformer by looking at any catalog and check the available nearest size of a transformer. Now let's solve an example on how to size a transformer. The example states that a project's demand load was calculated as 1,214 kilowatts considering all connected loads. Calculate a suitable size for a three-phase transformer to supply this project and convert 11 kilovolts to 415 volts. We are given the power factor as 0.8 and the voltage or the secondary voltage is 415 volts. So the first step is to obtain the main demand load and it's already given as 1,214 kilowatts. The second step is to obtain the load in current by converting this kilowatts into amperes by using this formula which will equal the main demand load multiplied by 1000 divided by root three multiplied by the power factor 
multiplied by the line to line voltage, which will give us a current load of 2,111 amperes. The third step is to apply the transformer's sizing formula or the KVA formula, which equals the load voltage line to line multiplied by the load amps multiplied by rho 3 divided by 1000, which will give us a KVA load of 1515 kilovolt ampere. Now, based on this value, we will look into the nearest available transformer in any manufacturer's catalog. The nearest available transformer, taking in consideration also future loads, is 1,600 kilovolt amperes. I have included here one table that you can select a suitable size from. You'll see that the suitable size for our example is 1,600 kilovolt amperes. That is the nearest to 1,515 kilovolt amperes. It's either 1,250 which is not going to be suitable for our example. And either we can select the 2000 kilovolt amperes, which is more than we need and will be more costly. So 1600 kVA is the suitable size for our transformer. Now, let me show you how you will indicate the size and type of a transformer using a single line diagram. Let's open the previous interpreted single line diagram and check the load or the demand load of this project, which is 1,214 kilowatts. So if we look at the transformer, we will find that it's 1,600 kilovolt amperes, which transforms 11 kilovolts to 415 volts. And the type of this transformer is oil transformer, specifically an oil natural air natural transformer. So this was an explanation on sizing and selecting a suitable transformer for your project. By now, you should be able to size your transformer for any project easily.